Hi, I'm Matt Jenner, and welcome to my introduction to the basics of organic synthetic chemistry. By the end of this short video, you'll hopefully be able to tackle the synthesis of fairly complex looking molecules, but to do so, we first need to get acquainted with some of the more basic reactions in organic chemistry. So let's get started. Alcohol, aldehyde, ketone and carboxylic acid functional groups are all integral parts of many different organic compounds and they're all relatively easy to form by way of oxidation or reduction reactions. An oxidation reaction is one which causes the main reagent to lose one or more electrons and often, in the case of organic synthesis at least, includes the addition of one or more oxygen atoms to the molecule. Oxidation can be used to convert a hydrocarbon to an alcohol, with further oxidation leading to the reduction of ketones, aldehydes or carboxylic acids. Some oxidizing agents are stronger than others, and an important part of organic synthesis is selecting the right one for your reaction, as stronger agents will result in more highly oxidized products. Reduction does the opposite to oxidation, as it results in the reagent gaining electrons and often losing an oxygen atom or two. As with oxidation, stronger reducing agents will take the process one or two steps further, and heating under reflux will strengthen this. It's also important to remember that this can be carried out on many other types of compound, such as the reduction of a nitrate to an amine, or the oxidation of the amine back again. Esterification is a very important nucleophilic addition reaction in organic chemistry, and knowing the mechanism of this helps with the understanding of a whole host of other similar reactions, such as peptide, ether, and thioether formation, which overall make up a large chunk of organic chemistry. Esterification involves the addition of an alcohol to a carboxylic acid under acidic conditions, with the alcohol being the nucleophile in this case. There are quite a few steps to this reaction, but the two important parts to note are how the nucleophilic alcohol attacks the carbonyl carbon, and then the protons from the acid cause the compound to lose a molecule of water to form the product, both of which are key to all nucleophilic additions, even if we change the product to, say, a peptide, which is formed in the exact same way. When making a compound which contains a benzene ring, aka an aromatic, being able to carry out electrophilic addition and substitution reactions, and knowing where on the ring the reagent is most likely to bond to, is crucial. The different positions on the ring are named ortho, meta, and para with respect to a substituent, as shown here, and certain functional groups will either direct the incoming reagent towards the ortho and para positions if the group is electron donating, such as an amine, alcohol, or ether, or direct it towards the meta position if the group is electron withdrawing, such as a nitro, ester, or carboxylic acid. For example, if we wanted to make a para nitrobenzene, the other group would need to be electron donating. Plus, a larger group would sterically hinder ortho substitution and increase the yield of the para product. So, an ideal substituent would be a tertiary amine. Right, now that we've covered a lot of the essentials of organic synthesis, it's time to put all of those techniques together and tackle the synthesis of something a little more complicated. When organic chemists are faced with having to synthesize a fairly complex molecule, like the example shown here, they use a technique called retrosynthesis to figure out how they're going to do it. Retrosynthesis involves working backwards from the target molecule, breaking bonds and carrying out functional group transformations until the compound has been reduced to a set of much simpler and commercially available starting materials. So, let's work through the retrosynthesis of this one. The first bond we'll break is the ester bond, which we know from our study of esterification will give us a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. Next, the amine group needs to be converted to a nitro group so that we can remove it, as ammonia is a nucleophile, so simply adding that via electrophilic addition is not possible. Here we label the arrow with the type of forward reaction we'd need, which, for the conversion of nitro to amine, is a reduction. Our next step is to convert the carboxylic acid right back to a methyl group, the forward reaction of which would be an oxidation with one of the stronger oxidizing agents mentioned earlier. Finally, we disconnect the nitro group, which would be electrophilic addition in the forward reaction the para version of which is very favourable due to the methyl group being electron donating and an ortho para director. And this leaves us with the commercially available starting material, toluene. All that's left now to complete the synthesis is selecting the perfect reagents, which is all down to how reactive we need them to be to carry out each step, such as selecting the very strong oxidising agent, potassium permanganate, as our reagent for the oxidation of the methyl group to the carboxylic acid. And voila, we have one complete synthesis for a relatively complex looking molecule. So there you are, you should now be ready to head out into the big wide world of organic synthesis. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and just in case you thought it was maybe not quite exciting enough, here's an explosion. Goodbye.